Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Ms. Laura Lee Langley, Clerk of the Executive Council. The Honorable Scott Bryson, President of the Treasury Board, representing the Government of Canada. The Honorable Mark Fury, Attorney General and Minister of Justice. The Honorable Kevin Murphy, Speaker of the Nova Scotia House of Assembly. The Honorable J. Michael McDonald, Chief Justice of Nova Scotia. The Honorable Stephen McNeil, Premier of Nova Scotia, and Mrs. Andrea McNeil. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Arthur LeBlanc, Lieutenant Governor Designate, and Mrs. Patsy LeBlanc. Please be seated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to historic Province House. On behalf of the Honorable Stephen McNeil, Premier of Nova Scotia, I welcome you to Province House and the installation of the Honorable Arthur LeBlanc as the 33rd Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia since Confederation. My name is Glennie Langell, Chief of Protocol for the Province of Nova Scotia. I am so honoured to be the Master of Ceremonies for today's installation ceremony. Today's event is taking place in the territorial, traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We will begin today with a traditional Mi'kmaq smudging, a ceremony which uses sacred medicines such as sweet grass or sage, which are placed in a smudge bowl and burned. The rising smoke represents our prayers being taken to the Creator. Smudging plays a central role in traditional Mi'kmaq ceremonies. It helps to open our hearts, our minds, and spirits to healing. The smudging will be conducted by Elder Doug Knockwood. Elder Knockwood is also a member of the Order of Nova Scotia. I welcome you all here uh, this afternoon in our endeavor to welcome our new leader for the area. And I say the, the, uh, the prayer for our success of our new premier. And wish each and every one of us will be um, happy with our situation as it stands today. I'm <clears throat> the reason I'm, I'm doing the smudging is to talk to our great spirit to help and to guide each and one, every one of us in this endeavor to uh, select our leader for the next five years. <clears throat> and I hope that the, the the things that will be happening in the in the future that we will all benefit 
and be able to work together as a team along with our Megamog leaders. I thank each and every one of you for being here today. Samao Muzika Skrili Menakam Sittami Bibani Maluchida Bonamang Dam Gluke De Wisku Aktan Basika El Daikwa Chiksin Magodes Nenu Chikelu Kuzuan and Italy was to the Yignoma Nigma Vigidia Chiksin Magnus Menaka Abijadu Desa Dana Udanka Dan Basikelu Kesio Tesnin Akmukisi Emu Hagito Deta He's no big well Kaladuak Thank you, Elder Knockwood, and thank you, Grand Captain Andrew Denny. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I would like to call upon Marcel Dantemont, who will lead us in the singing of our national anthem, O Canada. You can find the words to the anthem in both official languages in your installation program. I would now call on Ms. Lorelei Langley, Clerk of the Executive Council, to present the Royal Commission of Appointment. Justice LeBlanc and Mrs. LeBlanc, Premier and Mrs. McNeil, Chief Justice McDonald, former Lieutenant Governors, Speaker, members of the Executive Council, Minister Bryson, family members, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable Arthur LeBlanc appears before the Executive Council of the Province of Nova Scotia today to present his Royal Commission of Appointment and to be sworn in as Lieutenant Governor of the Province of Nova Scotia. I wish to inform the members of the Executive Council that the Honourable J. Michael MacDonald, Chief Justice of Nova Scotia, has been requested and authorized to administer the Oath of Allegiance and the Oath of Office. Justice LeBlanc, I present to you the Royal Commission of His Excellency, the Governor General, with instructions appointing you to the office of Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia. Is it your pleasure that this commission be read and published? It is my pleasure. I would now call on Dr. Christopher McCreary, Private Secretary to the Lieutenant Governor to read the Royal Commission appointing the Honourable Arthur LeBlanc to the office of Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, Canada, her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. Two, the Honorable Arthur Joseph LeBlanc of the City of Halifax in the province of Nova Scotia. Greeting. Be advised that placing special trust and confidence in your prudence, courage, loyalty, integrity, and ability, we, by and with the advice of our Privy Council for Canada, pursuant to sections 58 and 59 of the Constitution Act 1867, do hereby appoint you, Arthur Joseph LeBlanc, Lieutenant Governor of the province of Nova Scotia. 
during the pleasure of our Governor General of Canada, effective on the day on which you make and subscribe the oaths of office and allegiance required by Section 61 of the Constitution Act 1867. And we do hereby direct you to carry out your duties in accordance with the powers granted to you by the Constitution Act 1867 and any other statutes, our present commission and the annexed instructions or instructions that may from time to time be given to you by our Governor General of Canada or our Privy Council for Canada and in accordance with such laws as are in force in the province of Nova Scotia. And we do hereby direct that as soon as you have made and subscribed the oath, our present commission supersedes our commission issued under the Great Seal of Canada on March 13, 2012, appointing Brigadier General the Honourable John James Grant to be Lieutenant Governor of the province of Nova Scotia. In testimony whereof, we have caused these our letters to be made patent and the Great Seal of Canada to be hereunto affixed. Witness our right trusty and well-beloved David Johnson, Chancellor and Principal Companion of our Order of Canada, Chancellor and Commander of our Order of Mer Military Merit, Chancellor and Commander of our Order of Merit of the Police Forces, Governor General and Commander in Chief of Canada. At our Government House in our City of Ottawa, this 22nd day of June, in the year of our Lord, 2017, in the 66th year of our reign, by command. Chief Justice McDonald, would you please come forward and administer the oath of allegiance and the oath of office to the Honourable Arthur LeBlanc. Arthur LeBlanc, would you please come forward. Would you please take the Bible in your left hand as you swear the oath of allegiance and the oath of office. I, Arthur Joseph LeBlanc, do swear that I will faithfully and bear true allegiance to, to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, her heirs and successors. So help me God. Et aussi en français, s'il vous plaît. Moi, Arthur Joseph LeBlanc. Je jure fidélité et sincère allégeance à Sa Majesté la Reine Elisabeth II, Reine du Canada, et ses héritiers et successeurs. Ainsi Dieu me soit en aide. In the oath of office. I, Arthur Joseph LeBlanc, shall well and truly execute the office and trust of Lieutenant Governor of the province of Nova Scotia, and duly and impartially administer justice therein. I shall well and truly execute the office and trust of Keeper of the Great Seal of Her Majesty's Province of Nova Scotia according to the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. Et aussi en français, s'il vous plaît. Moi, Arthur Joseph Leblanc, je remplirai bien et fidèlement la charge et le mandat de lieutenant gouverneur de la province de la Nouvelle-Écosse et j'y administrerai la justice avec exactitude et impartialité. Je remplirai bien et fidèlement la charge de gardien du grand sceau de la province de la Nouvelle-Écosse, domaine de sa majesté, au meilleur de ma connaissance et de mon habilité. Ainsi Dieu me soit en aide.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, His Honor, the Honorable Arthur LeBlanc, Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia, and Her Honor, Mrs. Patsy LeBlanc. Please be seated. Your Honours, we will now proceed with the first musical portion of the program. I would now like to call upon Marcel Dantremont to come forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Dantma. I think I might not be the only one with a little tear, maybe. <laughs> 
We will now proceed with the presentation of the Chancellor's Chain for the Order of Nova Scotia. The Order of Nova Scotia is the highest honor conferred by the Crown in the province of Nova Scotia. Established in 2002, the honor recognizes Nova Scotians for outstanding contributions to their community and province. His honor was presented with the insignia of the Order of Nova Scotia earlier by Lieutenant Governor Grant. In addition to becoming a member of the Order, the Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia serves as Chancellor of the Order during their time in office. Your Honour, it is my privilege as Secretary of the Order of Nova Scotia to call upon Bridget Newman, Chair of the Advisory Council of the Order of Nova Scotia, to present you with the Chancellor's Chain of the Order. Ms. Newman. I would now ask the Clerk of the Executive Council to come forward and present the Great Seal of the Province of Nova Scotia to His Honour. Your Honour, this seal is the Great Seal of the Province of Nova Scotia. Is it your pleasure to commit this Great Seal to the safe custody of the Minister of Justice? It is my pleasure. Mr. Minister of Justice, would you please come forward? Minister of Justice, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, to your safe custody I commit the great seal of the province of Nova Scotia, the symbol of sovereignty and authority in this province. Your Honour, I accept this responsibility which you have entrusted in me in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, and I promise faithfully to keep the Great Seal of Nova Scotia in my custody so long as I shall remain the Minister of Justice. We will now proceed with the presentation of the Royal Key to His Honour. The Royal Key was first presented to Her Majesty the Queen during the 2010 Royal Tour. In the absence of the outgoing Lieutenant Governor, Brigadier General Grant, the Royal Key will be presented on his behalf by the Executive Director of Government House, Dr. McQuarrie. The Royal Key is a symbol of the transfer of responsibility for Government House as the ceremonial home of all Nova Scotians. Mr. McQuarrie, Dr. McQuarrie, would you please come forward for the presentation? We'll now proceed with the second musical portion of the program. I would now like to call upon Tony Smith. Hallelujah. 
Say I took the name in vain I didn't even know all the name But if I did, well really, what's it to you? There's a blaze of light in every word It doesn't matter which you heard The holy and the broken, hallelujah Hallelujah I did my best, but it wasn't much I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch I told the truth, I didn't come to fool ya And even though it all went wrong I stand before the Lord's song With nothing on my tongue but hallelujah Hallelujah Tony Smith, thank you. I would li now like to ask the Honorable Scott Bryson, President of the Treasury Board, to come forward to offer remarks on behalf of the Government of Canada. Thank you, Glenny. I must say, Tony, you and Marcel are hard acts to follow. Uh, well done, indeed. Uh, Premier McNeil, Chief Justice McDonald, former Lieutenant Governors, Mr. Speaker, uh, Lieutenant Governors Raw, Viano, and Lewis, Executive Council members, and there are members of the legislature here I saw earlier as well, Grand Captain Denny, friends, fellow Nova Scotians. J'aimerais commencer en remerciant le Brigadier Général Jim Grant, ainsi que Madame Joan Grant pour leur service. Together they served this province for over five years making tremendous efforts to connect with Nova Scotians, and particularly with the Mi'kmaq community across Nova Scotia. They are sadly unable to be with us today after the passing of their son, Major John Grant, following a courageous three-year battle with cancer. And I, I know that you all would join with me in uh, our sincerest condolences to the Grant family during this very tough time. Je suis fier d'être ici aujourd'hui au nom du Premier ministre Justin Trudeau et du gouvernement du Canada pour souligner une occasion historique. Le premier lieutenant gouverneur acadien de l'histoire de notre province. Les Néo-Écossais ont hâte de connaître le nouveau représentant de Sa Majesté la Reine Elizabeth II, et je sais que vous avez vous aussi très hâte de faire leur connaissance. One thing about it, Your Honor, you won't have to, it won't be a big adjustment to be called Your Honor uh, in this job. That's a bit of an advantage you have in starting off this. You are ideally suited for this role. As a longtime member of our judiciary, you bring with you an important understanding of the issues facing Nova Scotia and Nova Scotians today. You understand our successes and you understand our challenges as well. Your experience as a director 
will help you connect with entrepreneurs and business people across this province who are eager to be part of, of a growing economy here in Nova Scotia in building a stronger Atlantic Canada, a modern economy created, focused on creating good middle-class jobs while preserving and protecting our environment for future generations. Vous et Madame Leblanc, qui êtes des bons bénévoles, vous engagez, vous apprécierez sûrement les nombreux néo-écossais au, au grand cœur qui ne cessent de se dévouer auprès de leur communauté jour après jour. And as the proud grandparents of six little ones, you know what it's like to look into the eyes of our children and want what's best for them. Beyond your constitutional role as Vice Regal Representative, you will play an important community role, working to strengthen the ideals and traditions we hold as Nova Scotians and Canadians. You will visit vibrant communities, large and small. I hope you get to Cheverry sometime down in Hans County. You'll spend time in schools where our young people will impress you with their energy and enthusiasm and their potential and you'll visit our seniors' residences, learning firsthand from the people who helped build our great province. Vous allez diriger des cérémonies militaires, reconnaissant les meilleurs au pays, et vous allez participer à des événements culturels, célébrant la diversité, et vous allez participer à des conférences et à des événements artistiques où des gens seront rassemblés pour partager des idées innovatrices. You will meet many ordinary Nova Scotians doing extraordinary things. And you will have the great honor of giving these everyday heroes awards and distinctions that they will be proud to take home to their families and their communities. And as you know, this province is made stronger through its diversity, its diversity of cultures, traditions, and perspectives. And that's a diversity that we need to draw on now more than ever to build on the, and prepare for the challenges of the future. And as we grow our province, you will help welcome new Canadians as they choose Nova Scotia as their home, and we will welcome them as fellow citizens to build a stronger Nova Scotia and a stronger Canada. You will have the opportunity to listen to all these voices and to get to know even better uh, this great province of ours and its people, and to make a positive, lasting impact on our shared future. Félicitations, I congratulate you, and I thank you for your service. Thank you, Minister. I would now like to ask the Honourable Stephen McNeil, Premier of the Province of Nova Scotia, to offer remarks on behalf of the province. Thank you very much, uh, Glennie, Mr. Bryson. So many distinguished guests. I won't go through the list as Minister Bryson did that for both of us. It's federal provincial cooperation. I, I do, as I look out, I, I know so many friends and family members of his and her honour are here. Uh, this truly is a day of uh, great family celebration uh, for you. Uh, it was wonderful to begin uh, this celebration uh, with uh, Elder Knockwood. Uh, to begin this, I think back. Uh, Minister Bryson invited you, Your Honour, to Cheverie. Everything starts in Annapolis Royal, so don't let him forget that, so I welcome you back. But I go back that far 400 years ago uh, when uh, Champlain was greeted by Member Two. Uh, in peace and friendship, uh, in a way that I think is the foundation of the values of Canada and this province, and over those 400 years with all of our challenges, uh, we've turned out to be a pretty impressive country, that the beacon of the world, uh, that we become the beacon of the world, uh, and I believe it's on those values uh, that Member Two and Champlain founded. The fact that we are standing here today, uh, it's where in our first Acadian Lieutenant Governor, congratulations. Uh, I hate to tell you, though, you not only have the Acadian community on your shoulders, you have all of us uh, on your shoulders as you assume uh, this new role. And as I look out, 
and I look at uh, the former lieutenant governors, each of whom have uh, put their own stamp on this office uh, to continue to build on our communities, to make them all they can be. I look forward, Your Honour, uh, to see your uh, stamp, uh, uh, you and your, uh, both of you put on this office. It's not lost on me. You and I had a great conversation yesterday. It's not lost on me. This is the very room that your brother Gaston was sworn into as a member of the House of Assembly a number of decades ago, and I know he would be uh, is in your heart, and I'm sure he is watching uh, you and is so proud of the honor uh, that has been bestowed upon you uh, for a lifetime of work uh, and uh, here. As well, it, it, as you know, I think all of us are looking forward to you raising the Acadian flag uh, uh, down at Government House. I know her honor, Mrs. Rose Marie Abraham, who will look down because uh, his former Lieutenant Governor raised that flag uh, there once before uh, on behalf of his wife and the Acadian people, but I know, Your Honour, uh, I look forward uh, to you uh, raising that flag on behalf of the Acadian people and all Nova Scotians at Province House. And I want to tell you, I'm, I, I don't have the authority to do this, but I'm going to take it upon myself to do it anyway. When you drive into Arishat, I fully expect you to put the Acadian flag on the car as you're going in. <laughs> And, and make sure uh, that you honk the horn all the way through town. Uh, but, Your Honour, uh, on behalf of all Nova Scotians, I want to extend our gratitude for you for accepting uh, the task that is before you. As Minister Bryson has said, there will be many wonderful opportunities for you to be able to see the gifts of this province in the eyes of our citizens, whether they're young or old, small and large communities. Uh, I know you will be impressed. Coming from a small community of Arishat, you know the strengths of those communities, but as you travel across this province, you will see amazing things that are happening quietly in communities from one end of this province to the other. And your presence, well, that will add to each and every one of those celebrations and endeavors that are happening in there. And I also want to say, uh, Your Honour, to uh, Mrs. LeBlanc, I want to thank you. Uh, no one takes on this responsibility uh, that has been bestowed upon your husband without a great team work. Uh, you will be called upon uh, to represent the Queen as well here in our province. And uh, I look forward as the Premier to continue to work with both of you uh, as we continue uh, to make and build on this province and celebrate each other. And I am so thrilled. I am absolutely, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be the Premier of this province when we were sworn in our first Acadian Lieutenant Governor. Congratulations. Thank you, Premier. It is now my pleasure to ask His Honour, the Lieutenant Governor, to give his installation address. Premier McNeil, the Chief Justice McDonald, former Lieutenant Governors Abraham Freeman and Francis, Mr. Speaker, Lieutenant Governors Roy Vienno and Lewis, Honorable Ministers, Minister Bryson, members of the Legislative Assembly, Grand Captain Denny, distinguished guests, friends, and family. I am deeply honored to have been called on to serve in a position that reaches back to the earliest days of contact between the Mi'kmaq and those French adventurers who arrived at Annapolis Royal more than four centuries ago. I am also mindful that I am the first person of direct Acadian ancestry to serve as the Crown's representative in our province and also the first Francophone since Governor Daniel Doge de Supercasse in 1713. I accept the responsibility of this office 
knowing that I will be guided throughout my tenure as Lieutenant Governor by the unwavering example of service and dedication set by Her Majesty the Queen. Even at 91 years of age, Her Majesty continues to carry out a robust and diverse schedule. The Queen's example of duty and grace is one from which we can all draw inspiration. One of the core roles of the post I now assume is to represent the Queen and carry out a number of important constitutional duties that serve to uphold our system of parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy in Canada and Nova Scotia. What has linked each of my predecessors going back to before Confederation has been representing the Crown in Nova Scotia. The Crown continues to be a unifying symbol constantly there to promote and champion all that is good about our province, country, and those who make Canada what it is. Je me réjouis à l'idée de me rendre dans toutes les régions de la province pour rencontrer ces citoyens généreux et les remercier au nom de tous les néo -Cossais. Il est important de souligner et de rendre hommage à l'excellence qui caractérise les néo-écossais qui se sont dépassés et qui se sont démarqués dans leur champ d'activité où ils, qu ils ont, où qu ils ont travaillé sans relâche pour améliorer la province et le bien-être de ses citoyens. I am sincerely impressed by the many Nova Scotians who fit this example and have done so in an, in an unheralded manner. I look forward to the many investitures and awards ceremonies where there will be an opportunity to honor and thank Nova Scotians for their service and dedication. As is the tradition for newly sworn lieutenant governors, I intend to focus on several themes that will be the basis for my activities during my time in office. A key focus will be on education and encouraging young people to pursue higher education be it at university or community college. One needs only to look at other successful civil societies to see that higher education is vital to the long-term viability of any society. Another of my key focus areas will be to encourage the adoption and maintenance of a healthy and active lifestyle, particularly for seniors, as one ages, it is easy to fall into a more sedentary pace of life. However, the detrimental effects of a slower life leads directly to increased health problems and loss of independence. It has been demonstrated many times over that an, that an active life is a healthy life, and I hope to promote and encourage active living. Personally, I have traveled a journey to a more active lifestyle for nearly 20 years, and it has greatly enhanced my own life and that of my family, despite the inevitabilities of aging. Comme je l'ai déjà dit, je suis acadien, et je suis très fier de cet héritage. Je poursuivrai le rôle de lieutenant gouverneur qui consiste à faire la promotion de toute la gamme des patrimoines des histoires et des cultures qui contribuent à la force de la province, y compris ceux du Mi'kmaq, de afro néo des Écossais et de bien d'autres groupes qui ont choisi de faire de la Nouvelle-Écosse leur chez soi. Mais je souhaite également mettre en valeur la culture acadienne et montrer comme, comment les Acadiens ont été et continuent d'être des acteurs importants de l'histoire de la Nouvelle Écosse. The celebration being held at Grand Pré to commemorate the lasting relationship between the Mi'kmaq and the Acadians provide a wonderful opportunity for all Nova Scotians to learn more about this important aspect of our shared history. In this fashion, the real history of the Acadian people will be accurately reflected. Both my wife and I have a deep interest in the arts, and we feel that a balanced life includes the arts in their many forms. Our province particularly 
is particularly blessed with a rich and diverse artistic community. One considers the outstanding talent of those such as Portia White, Alex Colville, Maude Lewis, Ashley McIsaac, Elizabeth LaForte, Bette McDonald, and Jarvis Benoit. You realize how fortunate we are in this part of the world to have so much talent in our presence. Throughout our time in Government House, we will endeavor to support the arts, as has been the tradition well established by several of my predecessors. Nova Scotia is a wonderful province that has a very rich history and so many attractive characteristics and qualities that make this land a great place to settle. Nova Scotians are known for their tolerance, caring, and generosity. À titre de lieutenant gouverneur, je souhaite la bienvenue aux immigrants et aux, et aux no, nouveaux Canadiens en Nouvelle-Écosse. Nous avons été témoins récemment de la générosité de l'accueil chaleureux des Néo-Écossais à l'endroit des réfugiés syriens arrivés dans notre province. Et je souhaite également encourager les gens nés en Nouvelle-Écosse à rester ici et à poursuivre leurs rêves dans leur propre province. La Nouvelle-Écosse nouvelle a tant à offrir que nous sommes une société accueillante. Since I was a child growing up in West Ayrshire, our province in Canada has undergone an incredible change. We have moved towards being a society that embraces and welcomes diversity. No longer is it extraordinary for people from a myriad of different backgrounds to rise to hold office. How far we have come since the expulsion of the Acadians, the maltreatments of the Mi'kmaq, and the events at Africville and the sectarian and linguist, linguistic imbroglios of the not-so-distant past. These are part of our shared history worth recalling. They represent the journey we have traveled and continue to travel towards a greater appreciation of fellow citizens, regardless of background. With this knowledge, we can all reflect upon the successes and the mistakes of the past and working together to overcome the historic wrongs experienced. There is still much to be done towards reconciliation with the Mi'kmaq and all indigenous people across Canada. But this is a journey that we, can, that, we, that we have embarked upon with vigor and sincerity. Although I have no military service, I wish to express my deep respect and gratitude for the Canadian Armed Forces and the veterans of past wars and conflicts. This respect has its origins in that my aunt's husband, Napoleon Leblanc, served in the Royal Rifles of Canada during the Second World War and was taken prisoner after the fall of Hong Kong. As a prisoner of war for several years, he suffered horrific treatment during his internment and weighed about 90 pounds when he finally returned to Canada. Like most veterans, he never spoke of his experience and he stoically carried on, even going overseas to serve as a peacekeeper in Korea. Today's Canadian Armed Forces continue to demonstrate great professionalism, courage, and honor across a wide range of missions and operations. During my, life, during my time as Lieutenant Governor, I look forward to the close relationship that exists between the Crown in Nova Scotia and the members of the military who are based in this province. Je tiens également à exprimer mon admiration et ma gratitude au premier intervenant dans les efforts héroïques pour sauver et aider les personnes en détresse sans digne de mention. Les premiers intervenants sont souvent exposés à des cir circonstances pénibles et chaotiques, et pourtant ils parviennent à faire le travail nécessaire dans des situations fort traumatisantes. You have just witnessed the transfer of the royal key to government house. This transfer is a new practice that was established between my two immediate predecessors. That royal key symbolizes the respect and care that left and governors have for the oldest vice regal residents in Canada. It also symbolizes the efforts that each lieutenant governor will undertake 
to ensure that Government House will remain a place of pride and openness. As the resident guardian, I will continue to make Government House the ceremonial home for all Nova Scotians and accessible to the public. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge with thanks and admiration the service rendered by my immediate predecessor and Mrs. Grant. I know that the Grants very much wanted to be here today, but they have been so very gracious and helpful to Patsy as, as we assume our new role. We extend to the Grant family our sincere condolence on the passing of their son, Major Robin Grant. The Grants worked tirelessly as and emulated Her Majesty's example of service and duty. Over the past five years, they greeted everyone with great warmth, kindness, and grace. On behalf of all Nova Scotians, I thank Jim and Joan for their service. Finally, let me say how much Patsy and I look forward to meeting the remarkable people who make our province and country such a wonderful place in which to live. Thank you, Messi, Wilaliok, and Tabur Liva. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the ceremonial portion of the installation. Please rise. I would like to call upon Marcel Dantremont to lead us in the singing of the royal anthem, God Save the Queen. Following the royal anthem, please remain standing for the departure of their honours, the members of the Vice Regal Party, and the members of the official party. JTFA, Guard of Honor. Does His Honor wish to inspect the guard? Yes, I do. Aye, sir.
Salute, freezer! 